my name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Welcome to Shrink Wrap Hawaii. And we've got a show like we've never had before and we'll probably never have again. Uh, you know, I think we should just cut right to the chase here. Hi, mate. Up Welcome aboard, Black Hi. Sand Bob. Hi. Black Sand Bob. And Captain Katz. Stephen so, Katz. Black Sand. Hi. How come you to be here? Well, lad, I was in the neighborhood. We had to careen the ship. The treasure seeker scraped the barnacles off her. I like to keep her fresh between the spring and the summer. Aye. So, and I was in the neighborhood. Aye, careening is when you go ashore uh -huh. for maintenance. You put the ship up on its side. And you can clean it and maintain it. See if there's Saves anyone hanging on to the bottom. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, uh, when did and you, you had kindly invited me to stop by this uh, cabin, this lovely appointed cabin with the magic spy glasses. All right. Well, as you know, right. um, we're here to talk about what makes people do what they do. So really? When did you decide to become a pirate? Well, it was sort of thrust upon me. I, I, I was. Uh, I was a merchant at one time, a purveyor of uh, rice cookers and uh, <laughs> um, Mongolian snow helmets, and then the market just fell out of that. And they, they gave me the boot in a polite way, but uh, I found myself at loose ends, at liberty, as they say. And then I discovered the treasure seeker, Hawaii Pirate Ship Adventures. Uh-huh. Aye. Aye. Ah, so there's a the lot only buccaneer vessel in this state, in this region of the Pacific. And we take families out and children five days a week. We teach them how to be pirates, buccaneers. Uh -huh. And then ah. they run for office? Aye, ah, some do, some do. There's a few on the city council. Uh, but I shouldn't mention the name. Some are in litigation as we speak. Uh, I see. So. Um, it's a tough life, the life of a pirate, no? Well, it is. It's challenging, but it's rewarding. Uh, it can be physically strenuous. And you see the athletic condition that I'm in. Uh, and the wood suggests that. I, of yeah. course, of course. Uh, but it's very gratifying to meet the children, the next generations, and their families, and to teach them what they need to know to be pirates. What do it's you very need gratifying. to know to be a pirate? Well, they need to know how to speak like a pirate. Uh -huh. It's uh, the adequate pirate terminology. Can you give me your a nautical a vocabulary? Lesson? Well, you know, it's like the sides of the ship. When uh -huh. you're ashore, you say this be the left side of right. the ship. But at sea, you say this is the port side, uh -huh. the port side of the ship. Uh -huh. And the way to remember that is many times when I get home, I enjoy a glass of port every now and then. And by the time I get home, often the port, there's no port left. So that's how I remember no the port, port left, is the left, left side of the ship. Ah, and, and of course, the starboard uh -huh. side is the right side of the ship. Uh -huh. uh, and that goes back to sextants and uh, navigation. Uh, so what are starboard. some other terms? I mean, what like the well, R thing? Oh, the R, well, that goes back to I see, this is what's amazing about the world of piracy, is there's the reality, the history, and then there's a romance around it, because mm -hmm. it's such a charged profession. Speaking of which, I, romance. <laughs> you're not my type, Captain. I'm no, very not. platonic. I realize the times have changed. Anyway, I'm what's blushing. your question? I'm blushing. Okay, yeah. yes, you um, is there a Mrs. Uh, Black Sand? Oh, well, you could say that. Uh, she's a short. Now, that's Algaroba Annie. Uh, she's a mermaid uh, of the albino persuasion and uh, met her on a moonlit night. Uh, she came up alongside the stern, and uh, something about her demeanor and countenance, we brought her aboard, and she's been a tremendous help to me. How does it work with mermaids on board, on land, with the feet? With the feet? <laughs> She's not that tall. I've never measured her, lad. So I would imagine, you know, I mean, she's the right height, but I've you never know, taken a tape to measure but I thought how many like, feet. have a flipper down there instead of feet. Well, that's rather a personal question, <laughs> Captain Steve. 
You've been around. So is she the only You've been one? in the is dating she pool. Been the only one? Do they have a match.com oh. for mermaids? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, actually, I think she was on Tinder, which surprised me. It's a, similar to Tinder, but it's more about Softer. romantic feelings. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, she's a sweetheart. She's a sweetheart. She supports me. But it's true. It's it's very it's apt. Speaking about support, uh, is there big money in uh, piracy? Oh, uh, there can be. See, that's the thing. There's tremendous risk uh -huh. and tremendous reward. Uh -huh. uh, and we do often we keep the ship moving uh, because you know the IRS sometimes takes an interest in. Uh, ah. And I think it's jealousy. The pirates, pirate. Ah, that's right. That's right. I think they want to learn techniques from us. Jealousy. Yeah, yeah. So probably so. Do you have that's any the international renegade society. You're teaching little kids to about how to be a pirate. Uh, no, and I'll tell you why. That it's because if you look through history, pirates only appear at times when the gap between the haves and the have-nots ah. becomes insupportable. So you sort of so a pirate, in a sense, is justified uh -huh. by their existence, by their presence, because in our own way, we're addressing a the tremendous equality. injustice right, right. Sort in of the like world. Extra legal welfare. Yeah, we don't always make it better, but we address it. Uh, sometimes there's no about return like address. The violent part. Well, that's mainly self-defense. Uh, for we're training crew. We're training the young mates to be members of our crew. But Black Sand, uh, seriously, self-defense? What about boarding other ships? Well, we do that occasionally. Some of my crew live in a boarding house. I mean, these are difficult times. Uh, boarding house? Uh, I have a hammock myself that I string up between the ironwood trees. Ah. Uh -huh. And uh, that's my favorite home. Uh-huh. Cuts down on the rent expenses as well. Is there rent on the ship? Or no, you have no. another home. No, I mean ashore. Ship? When you're ashore, you know, I I love the ship, but I, I don't feel right sleeping on it. It feels indulgent. Uh-huh. And it's too it's too much like a crib. It reminds me of my childhood and then I Tell me a little I bit miss about my your parents child. and get Were emotional. You, was your dad a pirate? Well he was in spirit. He he did something else. He was actually more of a, of an engineer, an artisan. Uh, he protected villages and towns from fires. And huh. uh, he was ahead of his time in a lot of ways. But it was his love for piracy that I think steered me in this direction initially. So the way you describe your function before, it's almost like a, a, a Robin Hood of the seas. Well, that's how I like to see myself. Uh -huh. Not everyone does, but uh -huh. uh, that's a very kind, uh, kind assessment. Yeah, uh, but because do you think that piracy has gotten a bad name? Uh, well, judging by the recent Congress and the, the main continent, <laughs> I, I would have to agree. But uh, I don't know. I think it, it's very charged because we stand with one foot in history and one foot in fable. Uh -huh. And when you straddle a charged space like that, it's very, very powerful. And I think, I think all the young people of the world, all the people of the world need to see identity as a living, charged thing. And when you go to sea and you experience that where the ocean, where the tides meets the land, the only way I can describe it, it's almost like a soul battery that lights you up. If you're alive, if you step on a ship and go into these turquoise sparkling waters that surround us, if that doesn't light you up, I, well, it lights me up Yeah. and the children we bring aboard. Uh huh. Are there any physical um, challenges to being a pirate? Well, <laughs> I occasionally, I once I once had a mate give me a suggestion by way of a belaying pin to the back of the head, and that, you know, that gets your attention. <laughs> um, but uh, and there's always the risk of splinters uh, since it's a wooden ship. Uh, I've had some close calls, but but that's Have the thing. The sea, overboard? the sea is an un nay, nay, no, not, not in not in four years. Well, don't say that. I wouldn't want to joke about that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We're very proud of that, of a spotless safety record, uh -huh. uh, you know, apart from 
taking prisoners and I noticed, binding them. I noticed and when I came to visit. Occasionally, fl occasional floggings, if you, you want. You, you, when, when you're in charge, when you're captaining the ship, if that's a word. Uh, I hope it is. Huh? You take on a whole, you're no softy as a captain, I got to say. <laughs> well, that's kind of that. But see, that can be misleading. Like everyone looks up to rank in our modern society. But a pirate ship, the pirates actually created an early functioning democracy that is very, very responsive. If a captain shirks his duties, uh -huh. he will be handed the black spot. The black spot? The black spot, yes, which will potentially depose him a challenge from one of his crew. Just last week, my own first mate, Flintlock Scar, handed me the black spot. And luckily, it turned out to be an Oreo cookie, but I was <laughs> alarmed at first. But so there is, you have to be responsible. See, this is the thing. It's a little bit like you can be, now I prefer the term gentleman of fortune rather than pirate because it covers more ground and has a little more uh, of a genteel uh -huh. reality to it. But I'm not, I am a pirate after all. It's but kind it's of a macho, doesn't like Annie, is that her name? Oh, Algaroba Annie? Yeah, does she get a little uh, worried sometimes that you'll come home to her? I mean, there's, you know, now, I think so she macho. knows, she know, I, you know, we'll, we have night cruises where young lasses from all over the world come ashore and I dance. Saw that. Ah, I think you came aboard, right? Yeah. Uh, not dressed as a young lass, so I recognize right. you. But uh, they'll come on and dance, and it's actually, I think it's a good experience for being in a committed relationship because you're faced with, well, look at all the beautiful women there are in the world. And they every night I see them. practically throwing their lingerie at you that night. Oh, you were there that <laughs> Well, maybe we should. Uh, <laughs> is there a sponsor who comes up? No, 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 that's, the, no, that's fine. No, no, but I find it, it validates my feelings for Annie because I know during the cruise, at the end of the cruise, I'm still a blessed man to go home to her. And I know that. And, you know, many don't have that experience of seeing the other people who are uh -huh. out there. So, uh, it, and, and I, you know, I, I, do, I do believe and practice in monogamy, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. With Annie. Well, actually, that's a board game she likes to play. <laughs> it's like Monopoly. <laughs> no, no, it's like, but, uh, no, 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 actually, the ship, many people don't realize this, the railings of the treasure seeker, our ship, are carved out of monogamy. What I meant to say was I believe in mahogany. I see. Uh, I see. It's hard. And between the more people, the better. That's a hard wood. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, um... We got to take a break we coming do. up here. All yeah, right. yeah. All uh, right. Not for our sponsors, just for self promotion. Ah, very good. And um, when we come back, I have a uh, shot of uh, grog. Having a shot of grog. Okay. Uh, and we'll be right back. Don't touch that mouse. We will return uh, with more surprises. Stay right there. Aloha. Come back soon. Get this. All right. Your man of war off my chest. This guy looked familiar. He calls himself the Ultra Fan, but that doesn't explain all this. Why? Why? He planned this party, planned the snacks, he even planned to coordinate colored shirts, but he didn't plan to have a good time. Go, 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 go. Now you wouldn't do this in your own house, so don't do it in your team's house. Know your limits and plan ahead so that everyone can have a good time. Lucas, 
host of Hawaii is my mainland every Friday at 3 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. We talk about things of interest to those of us who live here and my Past blogs can be found at kawilucas.com. Okay, I didn't listen. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff, MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. Welcome back to Shrink Wrap Hawaii. Black Sand Bob has left the building, and we're here today with that incredible actor, stand-up comedian, total entertainer, Mr. Robert Jones. You flatter me, Stephen. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Good to be Welcome. here. Thank you. So I did see that gentleman of fortune uh, heading down the hall. Yeah. <clears throat> Mr. Jones. So, yes. um, I, we've known each other for, I don't know, probably close to 20 years now? I would say, yeah. What was yeah. it, 97 we Something, did? Uh, yeah, there we go. We did a Neil Simon play together. Right, right. And I don't think I have asked you. Like, we are on stage now watching, yeah. What? What, what, what drove you to uh, be a performer, to the stage? an, a an well, actor, it started an entertainer? <clears throat> when I was... Uh, I was in the fourth grade, uh -huh. and this is part of it, and I was running through the house <clears throat> with a wooden flute. Uh -huh. I tripped, the flute shot up into my mouth, <laughs> broke my upper palate, and I survived this. This you know. is not a joke. No, no, this is, is true. true this, I'm telling you the truth, because what you do, you help people. So yeah. I'm, you know, I want to tell the truth here. All right, this is not fiction. So, anyway, so I injured the top of my mouth. Soon after that, I developed a stutter. So I'm in the fourth grade, and we were living in Los Angeles at the time. And Los Angeles, being a little more progressive, had a very good speech therapy class at the school I was attending. And they encouraged children who had any impediment of any kind, for whatever reason, to get up in front of the group. Ah. And all the other kids had the same challenge, and you had to perform. You had to do something. So we would usually, you know, thank God Jonathan Winters had a variety show at the time, and yeah. I loved him. Uh -huh. So I would usually, you know, purloin one of his routines uh -huh. and attempt to do it. Uh, and so we would do, I think every week we did like a five or ten minute bit. Right, and uh, and then they would have a session where you would just go wild and run around the class and and yell and do whatever you wanted, um, and you know it was very it was very very funny because my stutter wasn't it wasn't major but it it was there you know, and my dad came to an open house and the teacher was a beautiful young woman, and this was in the late sixties so she had the boots, you know, very fashionable. And my dad turned to me and he's like, Bobby, now I get it. She's gorgeous. Will you introduce me? And he was like, P -p 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 please to meet you. 
But that's my dad. That's another story. <laughs> but actually, he's part of the story because my dad, who's been gone for many years, um, was a tremendous storyteller, uh, had a wonderful, uh, expressive, funny. You know, something would happen, and then when he told it, something about the way he told it made it into something legendary, bigger than it was, funnier than it was, you know. So I know I have that side from him. And the funny thing is, uh, well, anyway, let me finish that. So we moved to Hawaii mm -hmm. the summer after the fourth grade. Oh, wow. So I was done with that course, uh -huh. and I felt like, all right, I've made it. The stutter's gone away. And when I got to Enchanted Lake Elementary School, uh, they were doing Hamlet. They were going to do Hamlet that semester. And I don't know if I was talking to my dad, and he said, you know, that's one of the greatest plays ever. You know, this would be a good thing. And, and I was interested, so I tried out for the title role, got it. Serious. Seriously. That my, was your first, you started with Hamlet. Yeah, so my <laughs> best, yeah, right. <laughs> we won't, all right. So, and my best friend at the time played Horatio, my best friend in the play. So it was uh, wonderful, it was wonderful. Now, it was interesting, because after that, in the sixth grade, they were going to do Robin Hood. But I ran into, there were so many backstage politics, like kids vying for, now I want to be Robin Hood. I thought, oh, I'm just not into the politics, and I kind of turned away from it. So I didn't get back on stage till uh, community college, oh, Windward wow. Community College. So for me, traditionally in my younger life, it's almost like it was an area I would go into to accelerate, jumpstart my life, uh, um, invigorate my spirit because the wonderful thing about theater and acting and plays is you learn so much about yourself especially if you follow your heart and take the right roles the best roles uh -huh. you know I always loved I think Orson Welles was talking to the actress Sybil Shepherd and she said you know I just I haven't done enough I, I passed on some things. I didn't get a chance to be in some movies. And, and he said, you know, sometimes your career is defined by what you don't do. Like, it's very important that you choose the right thing, because when you go out on that stage, if you're connected to the material and the audience, your audience, you're creating something that has, I believe, it has a tangible reality. Right. And it affects people. Right. So it and you it too. needs oh absolutely, absolutely. Because every play I've done, whether it's uh, it's a murder mystery show with the Honolulu murder mystery players, or community theater, a Diamond Head, Manoa Valley Theater, even the uh, the Wanikai Mortgage Players, uh -huh. these are all committed groups who put the material out. Uh, every role I've played, usually afterwards or two-thirds through the production, it'll hit me, oh, I needed to learn this thing about myself right. refracted through this character. And you never see that coming in. But, uh, but while we're on that, there is a thing. I think it's very important. There have been many plays where I've thought logically, Oh, I should do this. It's high profile. It's prestigious. I like the other people who are in it. And then I'll get the script, look at it, and I feel nothing. Hmm. And then I'll know it's not right for me, and I shouldn't do it. And mm -hmm. I haven't. And on the other hand, when it is the right piece of material, yeah. you feel something and you move while you're reading it. Yeah. Uh, you get connected and, to it. Yeah, like, uh, I like the way George C. Scott described it. He said, when you're reading a script the first time, he said it's like the tumbler in a safe. Something in you clicks, uh -huh, uh -huh. and you know it's right. And God bless George C. Scott. It's a difficult Scott. life, though, no? I mean. It is. There's a lot of uh, sacrifices. Uh, I know, you know, my partner, Jan, was saying she keeps seeing things where people will say, uh, you know, be careful if you get with an actor, yeah. because they love their work so much. Right. They're going to do it whether it's immediately, um, you know, rewarding financially or not. Right. right. But uh, I also believe 
when you're on the right track, things work out. And, uh, and when I certainly, you know, um, as, well, as you may know, uh, I was in retail. See, and here's the other interesting thing. I was studying comedy and acting all my life, and uh -huh. I didn't realize it. I just thought it was uh, an interest, a hobby, something I did on the side to entertain myself or with friends. And as I look back, it's like I've been preparing for this work right. my entire life. I mean, in high school, my best friends and I would, would do silly pranks, uh, thankfully for the most part not harming anyone or anything, yeah. but just silly things. And this is all before video and YouTube. So we were uh -huh. just doing it for the sake for of real. the fun, <laughs> for real, yes. Yeah, live without a net, right? Yeah. But, um, but I think it's very interesting. I had a background in the arts. I, had an, I have an older brother who's an amazing artist mm -hmm. and who inspired me as a child. So I began to draw, you know, dinosaurs, bears, whatever yeah. I was interested in. And so my parents were like, oh, you can, you know, this could be a great career. Right. And so I followed the arts. Uh -huh. And at the same time, I had this desire to tell stories. So it's interesting because I followed the art path. It never occurred to me that I can create art with myself, with my body, and I don't need brushes or paint yeah. or sketch pad. And you do. I mean, when I came out well, on the ship to see you, you you just have this gift. Wow, that's that kind. That just gets people's attention and makes them laugh and, that's and makes them feel, makes them happy. Yeah, well, good. Yeah. One hopes. It's hard sometimes yeah. when you're in the center of it to not stop and go, oh, how much of this is vanity or how much of it is. Well, but the you idea know. of you yeah. saying before about how yeah. you learn about yourself through the parts that you play. Yes. I mean, I think that's very much has to do with while in my therapy sessions we do a lot of role play. Because oh, really? if you can understand what it's like to be the other yeah. person that you're having a problem with, yes. it, it, it really changes everything. Mm. Yeah, know, that makes sense. To step into somebody else's shoes yeah. and to realize like that, hey, I, I would feel the same way or I could do that or I could have done that. And yeah. when you're acting, you get to do that, to you try do. it on. You truly do. And it's very interesting. Uh, I mean, I've been fortunate. Some of the productions I've been in, the material will be informal enough uh -huh. that I've had the leeway or been given the leeway to embellish or develop the character, the script. And uh, especially in the uh, mystery shows, that's like an interactive right. theater show that usually happens at Dave & Buster's. Uh, look into that, folks. They're a lot of fun. Still doing that. Yeah, I do that occasionally. Yeah, I think with the ship, with my career as Black Sand Bob, I just find my almost the entirety of my energy is naturally going into that. Your pirates, so, I mean, they certainly look at you as the captain. <laughs> well, I suppose you're right. That's, yeah, I mean, yeah. I made a misstep, and boy, I thought like I was going to walk. Did the you plank. get in trouble? <laughs> no, I remember I went up to get the girl's water bottle, and you was oh. like, "Oh, she tricked you," and I'm like, "Huh." <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, there, yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of you safety You inhabit concerns. the character. Yeah, well, good. For real. Okay. You're so, kind. <laughs> You're we uh, got to wrap things we try, up. We tried to make Steve here into a pirate. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Didn't take. That's all right. But I think this is your calling. Stories. And it is. And self. That's why I like doing what I do. What you, what yeah. you like doing what you do. It's like being just innately curious about people. Yeah, and you have to be curious about yourself. Listen, yeah. listen to those voices. Well, that sounds. <laughs> On that as note, long as you're not arguing, listen, <laughs> listen to your own voice. No one knows you better than yourself. Black Sand Bob, yes. A.K.A. Robert Jones. Thank you for coming on to Shrink Wrap Hawaii. Thank today. you so much. It's been an honor and a pleasure. We'll be back again. See you later. Aloha. Yes. Now we do the role playing. Is that with?
Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. I